Hello and welcome to one of the staff at the American College of Surgeons that I've gotten to know over the last year as I personally traveled through the application process to become a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. Karen Freeman is the manager of the credentialing team in the Division of Member Services. She and her team receive, verify, process the applications, and then they hand off the approved applications to the volunteer-led Committee on Applicants to interview and recommend for fellowship candidates to the ACS Board of Regents. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Dr. Castle. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's really a pleasure having you here. I'm really impressed at the amount of work that you and your team do every year to go through over a thousand applicants for fellowship to the American College every year, and then to watch them stand at the Clinical Congress, or this year to um, zoom into the virtual Congress as newly minted fellows of the college. I will be one of those at the convocation this year alongside what I understand is, is close to 2,000 new initiates. Is that a correct number? Yes, congratulations first to you, Dr. Castle. I'm sure it was a, a year for you to, uh, to achieve this prestigious credential. Uh, and the number is 2,000, over 2,100 new initiates this year. Uh, so in 2020, we were looking to have 2020 initiates and we nailed it and got over 2,100. That's impressive. Is that a new record? That is a new record. Last year we had 1,993. We were seven short. So our goal was definitely to get over 2,000. So uh, it, it was a record. It's definitely a record. Well, that really speaks to you and your team helping people through this process to grow the American College of Surgeons. Could you start by letting us know what's required in the initial application? Uh, yes, let's bring up uh, a, a visual here and we can go ahead and, and talk about what it is to become a fellow. Okay, so of course we have two types of applications. One's for our domestic, uh, is for our United States and Canada applicants, and then we have our international applicants who are from other countries, all other countries. For domestic fellowships, our applicants must be uh, board certified when they apply, have completed one full year of independent practice in surgery at the time at the same location, have an active medical license free from restrictions or adverse actions from the state in which they practice, have a current appointment on a surgical staff at a hospital, submit a copy of their curriculum vitae, and have the name of five ACS fellows for references. Now, two of these references must be from their specialty, and three must be in their geographical area. This geographical area cover can cover over 200 mile radius. For our international fellowship, the applicant must be board certified in their country, have three years of independent surgical practice, have one year of practice in the same location, have a current appointment on a surgical staff at a hospital, have a full unrestricted license to practice in their country, submit a copy of a curriculum vitae, and have the name of three ACS fellows. Their references can be from anywhere. All applications are submitted online uh, at facs.org, and you must submit your application by December 1 of each calendar year to be inducted into fellowship uh, for the next calendar year. On the join page, you can select for fellow or international to reach the correct application and apply. Now, when filling on the applications, please fill it out in its entirety. Uh, this will eliminate any delays in processing your application. We'll communicate with you mainly via email. So it's important that we have an email on file that you check regularly. Uh, there are also maybe occasions when we'll have to call you. So it's equally as important to provide an alternate phone number and preferably your cell phone. Great, so an applicant submits all of their data and their complete application by December 1st for consideration for the next year. And what happens after all this information is submitted online and goes to the ACS staff? Well, when we get those applications, staff gets to work. Uh, after you submit your application, we will review for uh, completeness. We'll re uh, verify your certification, your time in independent, independent practice, and check with the next National Practitioner's Database to ensure you have no restrictions on your license 
or adverse actions that may prevent you from having a hospital privilege. You should receive an email about 15 days after you submit your application, and this will inform you that you've met the minimum requirements to apply. Now, after the applicants, after you receive this initial email, there's another one that's coming within 30 days. Uh, we'll, this is when we check the application for completeness and verify, we'll uh, verify that you are board certified. We'll re request a 12 month surgical list for our domestic applicants only. We'll send requests to the referees that you listed on your application and we'll ask for any information, missing information if applicable. The applicant will receive an email with a link to upload their surgical list and request for more and will and a request for more information if applicable. Now their references will also receive an email with a direct link to the online reference form. They'll be asked to log in. The next step to the application process is following up. We do a lot of following up. We'll continue to follow up with the applicant the references and until this application is complete. The deadline for a complete application is January 31 for the fellowship year. So if you want to submit your application on December 1, your application must be complete with surgical lists and all references must be received by January 31. So I encourage you to apply early to avoid the possibility of your application being postponed to the next year. So the process, it sounds like, is approximately a year long, and each applicant has a dashboard to follow along where they are. There is. There's a status update on your, when you log into your ACS account. You can see where you are in the process. It will show if we received your application. It will show when we, received all your, when we received all your references. And it will also show you that you're ready to go for the interview. Okay, and then how did or when are they notified of the interview process? When the application is complete, when your application is complete, we'll you know it's kind of like now what what we cannot send any applications to the committee on applicants or the international interview team if they're not complete. We will give you information about your interviews. So say in mid-February, all the completed applications are sent to the applicants on com the committee on applicants for our domestic applicants and to the interne international interview teams for our international applicants. Uh, we have a staff member. She's a, a committee on applicants administrator. She's the one who sends all the information to our interview teams. The interviewers will receive the applicants' biographical data the surgical list, and the names and numbers of the referees. Now, references are confidential. However, the interviewers can and usually do call these references to ask questions about the applicant. The interviews are conducted <clears throat> between March 1 through March, May 15th. The Committee on Applicants and International Team notify the applicant of the date, time, and location of your interview. ACS do not set up the interview. We may know the date, but we are not aware of the location nor the time of individual interviews. And the reason why I say that, because we get a lot of calls and uh, people are like, I don't know where my interview is. I mean, we will help you, but initially you have to go to your committee on applicants, chairperson or the international interview team. So, if the, once you go to your interview, uh, the applicants come back and they must be back, uh, the reports must be back by June 15th. They t the Committee on Applicants and the International Interview Teams only make recommendations for fellowship. If the applicants are recommended to the are if the applicants are recommended, then we send your application to the Board of Regents. If the applicants are not recommended, the applications are sent to the Application Review Committee for further invest investigations. So if approved by the Board of Regents, the applicants become initiates. And you an initiate cannot use the FACS behind their name until after they're uh, conferred at Clinical Congress in October. If not approved by the Board of Regents, the applicant is notified of the reason and the things they can do to reapply the following year. 
All applicants are notified of their statuses by July 31st. All approved initiates will become fellows when their fellowship is conferred in October at the convocation during clinical Congress. Great. Uh, I'm excited for the convocation, which this year is going to be virtual. I know that a lot of people I talked to, there was some angst about the interview. In the past, this was done in person. I did a virtual one this year. It was a panel of four people. You'll have a panel of at least two people, as I understand. And uh, it was basically just trying to find out how I was planning on involving myself more in the American College of Surgeons. I really appreciate it because it gave me a choice, a chance to talk to people outside of my specialty in my geographic area and to network and kind of get an idea of how I could better serve the geographic area and our regional committees. Uh, so I really appreciated it. I would say that some of the things I have heard uh, in our virtual age where we're doing interviews from our living room often is to still expect this to be a professional setting. Uh, I did hear one story about someone who uh, came to his virtual interview after working in the garden, was very sweaty uh, or something along those lines. You still have to look professional, it's a meeting. Uh, and it, it took approximately a half hour. It was very pleasant. So I would tell people not to stress about it. Okay, Dr. Uh, Castle, I'm gonna ask you a question about the virtual interview. This was the first time, first year that we had done this. So I'm uh, curious as about, you know, your experience in terms, did they give you a dress code? Uh, did they tell you what to expect when you got there? What, what information did you get from your interview team, Committee on Africans, before you got there? I got an email that was sent to those of us in that geographic area uh, explaining that we would have a half hour video interview, asked us to, they did ask us to dress professionally. Uh, and as I recall, the information was that, that we would just be asked about our general reasons for wanting to join the college uh, and a little bit more about ourselves. Uh, and also uh, the person who reached out to me via email uh, gave me her, in that email, gave me a cell phone number and encouraged us to reach out via email or call if we had further questions about this process. Did you feel prepared and going? Um, even though you may not have known what they were going to ask you, did you feel like you had enough information to get to the Zoom? Yeah, no, it was totally, it was totally stress-free. It was very, I felt very well prepared and I felt like they communicate extremely well. Okay, thank you. This is the first time that we had done this, so that's why I asked. Groundbreaking. I'm excited to go to a virtual convocation. Do I have to, do I get to walk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> walk around my living room? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so I, as I understand, so this video project came about because of the session that the Resident Associate uh, Society Associate Fellow Committee has had during a lunchtime session at the Clinical Congress for the past two years. I know many attendees at these in-person conferences had questions after and during the session for you. So I want to ask you, what are some of the questions that you most typically get from applicants that we can answer here? One that I think you touched on but didn't quite answer was, I was confused even having gone to the conference before about when my case list was due because I thought that was due in December and I was ready to upload it and there was nowhere to put it. So that's my question for you and then anything else that you think comes up frequently. Um, I will answer your question, and that's a great question, and many of our applicants are confused. We do not ask for the surgical list until we verify that you have met the minimum requirements. And we had talked about earlier, that's usually uh, within 15 days after you submit your application. But first, we have to uh, verify that you're certified, that you have the one year, and that you know, you're eligible to continue on with the process. So once you get the acknowledgement email that's like the 15 days out and then 30 days later you'll probably get you will not probably you will get an email with the link for you to upload the surgical list uh, and this you know that now we know your application is being processed if there's something else that's missing but we'll need your application to be complete and part of that surgical list is for the completion one of the other biggest um, questions or FAQs we get, it, it seems like it's a lot of wait time. I mean, the application process can be 
over a year. If you apply in January, you're not going to hear anything again until after the deadline of December 1 of the same year. And then we go into the next year when we start your interviews. So it's a lot, a lot of wait time. Uh, we at, when we have the application, it's complete. Then we're waiting around for, um, you know, your committees and your interview teams to schedule your interviews. That's a gap right there. So, uh, and when we show that the interviews are from March 1 through May 15th, March 1, people are calling, I don't know where my interview is. And it, it's, you know, it's up to the committee or the interview team to set, to set the, um, the dates. So it seems to be like a lot of time or a lot of angst between March and May 15th when they don't know their, when they're scheduled for the interview. And then of course, when they've had the interviews in March, you know, then you're not gonna, the uh, information does not even go to the Board of Regents for approval until June. So you have someone from March to June waiting, you know, well, I've had my interview, now what, am I a fellow? You know, so we're looking, actually looking at our communications to communicate better in between these times so that we can, you can know exactly where you are in the process. Um, so the biggest question in the FAQ is the time, when, you know. Everyone wants you to hurry up. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this information. If an interested applicant wants to reach out to you, how can they uh, contact you and your team? Well, as I have up here, you can always send an email to us at, uh, for our domestic candidates and for our international candidates, here's an email address. You can always call us at our 800 number and uh, we can keep this up here for a minute so you make sure that you can contact us. Uh, anybody can answer your questions about the application. Well, thank you very, very much. I appreciate you joining us. All right, thank you, Dr. Castle.